What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we're going to rewind all the way back to 2006 and have a look into the death of well-loved wildlife TV personality Steve Irwin. You'll find a lot of videos on YouTube about this topic, mostly breaking down the exact events that took place that day, but none of them go into any real detail on the stingray species responsible, its behaviour that day, and how and why it ended up killing Steve. So stick around and you'll learn exactly why this stingray did what it did. First though, I imagine most of you will know who Steve Irwin was, but there may be some people watching this video out there who don't. So Steve Robert Irwin was an Australian TV personality, wildlife educator and environmentalist, known for his wavy blonde locks and coining of the catchphrase, Crikey! From a young age, he grew up around saltwater crocodiles and other reptiles like lizards and snakes, having been taught about them by his dad. This was at the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park, set up by his parents, of which Steve would later become manager and rename it to its present day title, the Australia Zoo. I've been to Australia Zoo before, back in 2014. <laughs> and I did feel like it was one of the most education-centric zoos that I have ever been to. Although, that's not to say it isn't without controversy. Australia Zoo has been criticised in the past in regards to its animal welfare. Some have also suggested it became too Disney-fied and circus-like. And with the rise of influencers, Steve's father Bob, who distanced himself from the zoo in 2008, has hit out at social media stars being allowed into some of the animal enclosures to produce content. I suppose the overall tone here was actually set by Steve and some of his antics, but more on that in a minute. Anyway, in the mid to late 90s, Steve gained international fame from his TV series, The Crocodile Hunter. This is where I imagine most of you will have encountered him before. The Crocodile Hunter TV series followed Steve around Australia and other parts of the world on the lookout for crocs. Steve, who had been trained in the handling of crocodiles, would go for a let's say, hands-on approach with the crocs, often wrestling them in shallow water and dragging them onto dry land for a piece to camera. Some of the crocodiles featured on the TV show were captured as they were having to be relocated from areas where they weren't supposed to be. But some of those crocodiles were just minding their own business. Now, it's no secret that I've criticized Ocean Ramsey in the past for touching sharks. And I remember at the time being called all manner of names under the sun by Ocean Ramsey fans. Sexist pig, I think, is one that springs to mind. <laughs> and while I sit here pretty firmly on the Ocean Ramsey debate, I also have to say, I wasn't a massive fan of some of the things Steve did either. I'm sure I'll definitely get some stick for saying that, but I have to be honest with you guys, I wasn't a fan. He just wasn't really my cup of tea, as we say here in England. And remember guys, just because I wasn't a fan of Steve Irwin, it doesn't mean that you can't be a fan of him, or it was wrong of you to watch his shows. We can all have different opinions on things. I can understand perhaps the targeted relocation of crocodiles by Steve and his team from areas where they themselves weren't safe, or the humans that lived in those areas weren't safe. It's that human wildlife conflict thing that we've talked about before. But to actively wrestle a crocodile out of the water who was just chilling out minding its own business never really sat right with me. I wasn't that big of a fan of Steve Irwin. Now, just because I disagreed with Steve's methodology, it doesn't mean I can't appreciate the huge impact his TV shows had and the fantastic educational work that Australia Zoo has done. I imagine there's a fair whack of people out there who got involved with nature or conservation because of Steve Irwin. And there are millions of people out there who visit Australia Zoo every year who get educated about conservation and wildlife, which is a good thing. But times have changed. Animal welfare is a much larger driver in the wildlife conservation industry these days. Put it this way, if Steve decided to make the Crocodile Hunter TV show in 2024, I don't think he'd get away with some of the things that he was doing back in the 90s. As things turned out, Steve wouldn't get a chance to make a show in 2024 because in 2006, he was killed by a stingray while filming part of an underwater documentary series known as Ocean's Deadliest. So I'll talk you through the events that unfolded and give you some insights into the stingray species responsible. On the 4th of September 2006, Steve and his camera crew were at Bat Reef near Port Douglas in Australia. If you were wondering, that's not too far from St. Crispin Reef, the infamous reef where Tom and Eileen Lonergan disappeared eight years prior. Check out our video on that via the link in the top right, by the way. Anyway, Steve was filming for Ocean's Deadliest, and on this day they were actually looking for tiger sharks, but the filming was halted because of poor weather. You can see from this footage here, reportedly taken the day before, on September 3rd, that the water's really choppy and it doesn't look great for filming. Steve was known by those close to him as having attention deficit disorder, or ADHD, which meant that he had a real tough time sitting still and waiting around for something 
something to happen. And because of this, he decided he was going to head out on a dinghy with his cameraman and best mate Justin Lyons to capture some footage for a TV show being filmed by his daughter, Bindi. After a few minutes of motoring around, they came across a massive short tail stingray, otherwise known as a bull ray. Justin, the cameraman, who was the only witness to the incident, said the short tail stingray was big and he estimated it to be around two meters wide. So they jumped in the water, which was only about chest high, and filmed with the ray for a good few minutes with no issues at all. They'd got a number of shots that they needed and came up to the surface to have a quick conversation about the shots they'd got and the shots they still needed, and the pair decided they only needed one more shot. That shot was to be the stingray in the foreground, and Steve would be swimming from behind, and then the ray would swim off. So they headed back underneath, and Steve came towards the stingray from behind, and that's where it all went wrong. As he approached the stingray, it propped itself up on its pectoral fins and began rapidly stabbing upwards with its tail. Justin says it stabbed a bunch of times in the space of a few seconds. Justin continued filming as this was a rule that Steve had when they were out documenting things. So he carried on panning as the stingray swam off and didn't realize it had actually got Steve until he panned back and saw that he was surrounded by a pool of blood. Steve stood up in the water and shouted that he thought the stingray had punctured his lung and Justin then called the rubber dinghy over as he feared that with that much blood in in the water, they might be attracting sharks. Justin then hauled Steve into the rubber dinghy, which was when they noticed Steve had a two inch wound right over his heart and blood was pouring out. Immediately, they realized they had to get him back to the main boat as quickly as possible and try and get him to a hospital. Justin tried to keep Steve awake by reminding him about his kids and telling him to hang on. And while this was happening, Steve just calmly looked up and said, I'm dying. And those words were to be his final words. Soon after, Steve lost consciousness as they got him to the main boat and Justin tried to do CPR on him for over an hour as they powered to a nearby island called Low Island. But sadly, as soon as they reached that island, the medical workers who received Steve at the docks pronounced him dead on arrival. The autopsy report was never publicly released, but the stingray likely pierced Steve's chest, penetrating through his thoracic wall and his heart causing massive blood loss and trauma. You don't tend to survive being stabbed in the heart by anything, let alone a decent sized stingray barb. There were some rumors from a source supposedly close to Steve that on the day of the incident, Steve was actually high on magic mushrooms. Although just a rumor, without the toxicology report from the autopsy, no one would ever be able to definitively prove that. The footage of the incident, which was examined by the police, apparently does exist, or at least it did exist in the immediate aftermath. But those who were there that day at the wishes of Steve's family vowed it would never see the light of day. Now, onto the stingray. Could this tragic situation have ended differently? What exactly has gone on here? Well, short tail stingrays are a big stingray species. They're one of the biggest stingrays in the world, regularly reaching sizes of over two meters wide. Generally, they're distributed in the Indo-West Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Mozambique, and South Africa. They're pretty abundant across their range and are seen fairly regularly by snorkelers and divers. They don't tend to have many predators apart from other sharks and the devilish sea pandas, killer whales. Short tail stingrays, like many other stingrays, have a venomous barb on their tail. In these rays, it sits about halfway down the tail. The barb itself is serrated and extremely sharp, and it can also reach lengths of 12 inches long, depending on the size of the stingray. It's packed with venom that, when injected into its target, causes necrosis of the cells, which basically means the cells and tissue just die away. From a behavioral perspective, this stingray species is generally known to not be aggressive, and it's actually quite inquisitive and curious of things in its environment. To back this up, short tail stingrays are seen at loads of stingray aggregations around the world and have even been known to hand feed from humans. But saying this, like many other species of stingray, they have been known to strike out defensively if startled or harassed. Lots of people have been stung by these stingrays on the feet and the legs after accidentally stepping on them, and it's been reported that the vast majority of stingray-related injuries in New Zealand have been as a result of short-tail stingrays. Being barbed by one of these guys isn't necessarily a death sentence. Although extremely painful, your chances of surviving a sting from one of these guys is relatively high. It just depends on exactly where that barb gets you. If it's to your hands and legs, you'll probably be fine. If it's to a vital organ, you're in trouble. Based on that then, we've got a pretty non-aggressive stingray species. So what exactly has happened that caused it to strike out at Steve? Well, there's two different lines of thought here, and I'm gonna talk you through both of them. Considering this species of ray is predated on by sharks, including hammerheads and tiger sharks, then it generally has to keep its wits about it when it's swimming around. As Steve approached the stingray, the shadow cast from Steve from above could have spooked the ray into thinking that Steve was a shark species that was 
looking for an easy meal. And as such, it's just struck out in an attempt to defend itself from that predation. It is a plausible scenario. These rays will have likely had lots of run-ins with sharks before, and a quick stingray barb to the face would likely be enough to deter a shark, at least temporarily, to allow the ray to quickly swim away. Although, I'm not sure I'm buying it completely. Steve and Justin, according to Justin's testimony anyway, had been in the water with the stingray for a good few minutes before it decided to strike out. And although it's a wild animal and you can't really predict what wild animals are gonna do, I do find it a little bit strange that the stingray would just suddenly perceive these two things in the water to be sharks, even though it was fine with them for several minutes before. If that stingray was concerned about being predated upon, it would have either acted defensively straight away or just swum off. But the fact it was very chilled out in their presence for quite a few minutes beforehand makes me think it was a different reason. We've spoken before here on Shark Bites about when sharks and rays are cornered or penned in, they can act defensively. We've seen it before on the Shark Scientist Racks to Shark Attack videos we do. Remember that clip of the angel shark that seemed pretty chill and then suddenly just completely lost its shit and started biting the diver? Well, we know from that situation, the angel shark was completely surrounded by scuba divers and ended up having a camera shoved in its face, which it didn't like and reacted defensively. So I think a similar thing might have been the case here. Justin is positioned in front of the stingray, camera in hand filming away, and Steve has come from behind swimming above it. That stingray now in its mind has its front path blocked, behind it blocked, and above it blocked. And when you pen in a ray species, they might feel like they haven't got a good escape route. So I think as Steve has come over the top of the ray, expecting it to swim off, it's reacted defensively and fired off a number of tail strikes as a result. Anywhere else on Steve's body, and he'd probably have been okay. An inch to his left or his right, and he survives. But that barb has literally pierced him straight to his heart. There's an element of unluckiness here, there's no doubt, but there's also that element of just getting a little bit too close to a wild animal. When you're in the sea, the animals in there with you have the upper hand. You're basically a floating sack of potatoes in comparison to a stingray or a shark. And because of this, you've got to take extra precautionary steps to ensure that that situation is safe. Short tail stingrays are generally a pretty chilled out sea creature, but if you back them into a corner, the chances of them reacting badly goes up considerably. It's about weighing up the situation at the time and just assessing, right, what is this animal and how can I reduce my chances of having a negative interaction with it? And sometimes just keeping a safe viewing distance between you and that animal is all it needs. If you're swimming with something that has very sharp teeth or a barb, I would always recommend a distance of at least a few meters away. But I think that's the issue sometimes, that desire to get closer and to get the best shot sometimes overrides the number one concern and that's safety. I imagine after Steve was killed by a stingray, a lot of people around the world became very, very wary of these animals. And can you really blame them? This thing literally killed the world-renowned crocodile hunter. But in reality, stingrays pretty much across the board are pretty chilled out animals to swim with, provided you interact with them safely, i.e. not getting too close, not touching them, not stepping on them, and importantly, not backing them into a corner. I've swum with a lot of stingrays before and never really had any issues. To be fair, there was one slightly dangerous occasion in Mozambique when I was scuba diving. I found myself a few feet above a mating train of blotched fantail stingrays, about eight or nine of them in total, all following each other in a line. Thankfully, nothing bad happened, but that was a situation that I found myself in because for a split second, I stopped concentrating on what was going on in my surroundings and just didn't see them coming. That's a relatively dangerous situation to be in as well. A mating train of stingrays is not something you want to get in the way with because they're just supercharged and will strike out at anything that gets in their way. But in that situation, I just stayed completely still and motionless, floating above the mating train as it went underneath me. And thankfully, I didn't get a barb for my troubles. But it was absolutely my fault on that occasion for dropping my concentration for just a second. It just shows you that you've got to constantly be aware of exactly what's going on in your surroundings when you're in the ocean. So what do you guys make of the Steve Irwin incident? Do you think he could have done things differently or was there nothing that he could have done and he was just unlucky? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments. Please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it and if you found it somewhat informative, consider hitting the subscribe button as well. But before you head off, earlier, right at the start of this video, you heard me mention Tom and Arlene Lonergan who disappeared diving off a reef not too far away from where Steve Irwin was killed. Well, in this video, 
video right here, I dive into the events that unfolded back in 1998 and tried to figure out exactly what happened to them. You'll have likely heard of the story before. It's what the film Open Water was based off. So if you want to hear about the true version of events that inspired that film, then make sure you check out this video right here.